Hi friends, just wanted to touch base with you for a few moments. Wanted to show you something that I'm pretty proud of. Uh, this is something we talk about a whole lot whenever we're, of course, I guess a guy talks about it more than anybody else does. Just the thought of going and picking up a motorcycle, something you can enjoy. I'll tell you what, it's really a pretty thing, that is for sure. But you know what? I think the allusion to this thing is the fact that sometimes things in your life actually appear bigger than they really are. Do you ever have that? Things that just appear in your life and they're bigger than they really, I mean, they're much smaller than they are. You make something so big out of them. And that was something kind of the story I wanted to give you in regard to this beautiful little motorcycle. Sometimes we blow things up in our mind and we'll get offended at somebody. We'll call somebody else names or whatever, and pretty soon we're fighting over something that doesn't even matter. But I wanted to show you this, and this is kind of a cool thing. I wanted to show you that sometimes things are not as they appear. Sometimes things are just very small, but the illusion is, is that they're bigger than they are. Isn't that the truth? Sometimes in our lives, the things that we have thought was so big is really not that big. And, and so, you know, it's, it's something that, that I, I really believe we need, to, we need to talk about and look for opportunities that we can bring things back into proportion. Let me try to get this thing around here where I can talk to you a little bit. But I thought that was just kind of a cool thing. You know, the fact is, is a lot of times people see something and they think it's one thing, but it's actually something else. A lot of times we have disagreements and we think it's so big, but it's really not. It's something that's very small uh, by, by comparison. I mean, it, it really is. Our problems can seem so much bigger than they are and most things that frustrate us are exaggerated. They really are. Things that, things that are in your life that frustrate you the most, they're really quite exaggerated. It's not, it's not real. I mean, have you ever heard the, the old saying, making a mountain out of a molehill? You know, there's been a lot of times when we've all been in arguments or disagreements. And what we would do is, is we would get to arguing over some little thing and by the time we finished with it, it was huge. I mean, we take that, that little molehill and we make a mountain. Now, you know that, you know that analogy. Molehills are those they're done by those pesky little uh, moles and gophers. They, they make those little mounds around your yard and, uh, you know, they dig tunnels just underneath the earth's surface. And you may not appreciate the importance of that until you've seen the movie Caddyshack, but that's another story there altogether. But I, I, wanted, I wanted to talk to you about things in your life that seem bigger than they are. You know, I, I just, I've got this thing here. I've got this, this thing. And when you first looked at it, it looked huge. It looked, it looked normal, didn't it? It looked normal size. But then when you begin to see it in its true form, it's very little. It looks real. You know, it, it looks everything on it, all everything's in place, it looks just perfect, but the fact is, is it's not as big a deal as you thought it was. Isn't that the truth? Can I just tell you something? Most of the arguments that you're having, things that you're talking about in your family, things that you're discussing, maybe things that you're dividing over, it's really not as big as you think it is. We tend to exaggerate sometimes our imagination goes to work and we tend to and, and i'm just telling you something over exaggeration that enlarges the size of the problem it takes something from this size to being monstrous it, it takes something that's a little bitty like this and makes more out of it and and you know what you know what i'm talking about you've had all of those things happen somebody takes your parking spot somebody cuts you off you know you overreact um, somebody criticizes you, somebody unfriends you on Facebook, uh, you overreact. 
you know, somebody doesn't follow through on their commitments, there's a tendency to overreact and make something bigger than what it is. You know, they don't attend your event. They don't view your blog. I don't know. We could go on and on about all of the things that we overreact about. And we're thinking, oh my God, what are we going to do? But all the time, it's not a big deal. It's really, in reality, much smaller than our first perception of it. Here's the problem. When you begin to open your heart to things like that, that's where bitterness and unforgiveness takes root. I mean, it really is. I, I could help so many people with their disagreements, fights within friends and families, if they, if they would just let me kind of bring things back into proportion. They're fighting because someone looked at me wrong. Someone said something to me wrong. Somebody pushed me in a corner and I don't appreciate it. And it builds and it builds. And the, and the more attention you give it, the bigger it gets. You know, I'll tell you something. In such a, in, in such a state of mind, a, a minor injury suddenly becomes a mortal wound. And, and a simple difference of opinion becomes World War III. But we're dealing with hurt. We're dealing with anger. <coughs> Excuse me. Being upset. Uh, you know, uh, even enraged. When you first start out, it may seem bigger than it is. But things are not that big. They can be fixed. When you step away from things sometimes and look at it in its true light, in its true perspective, you find out that it's not really that big of a deal. You know, you may have problems on your job. <clears throat> you may have problems in your marriage. You know, everything in your house is breaking at one time. It seems overwhelming. And you're kind of at a place to where you're, and, and this is what I really felt when I wanted to share this with you today. There's a tendency when you see things that they look bigger than they are. And if we feed that in our imagination, it stays bigger than it is. But again, that, that great big motorcycle that looks so big right there at first, when you get it in its perspective, it's very small. I would think that some of the things maybe you're going through isn't really that big of a deal. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm not saying it, but I'm talking about when you get it in light of everything else, in light of the big picture, maybe, maybe you overreacted. You know, maybe Maybe you, maybe you got stubborn in it. I don't know. Maybe got embarrassed in it. But you're finding yourself straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. That's another analogy, isn't it? Making a mountain out of a molehill. Making something that's very small to appear very big. And as a result, it's, it's hurting your friendships with people. It's hurting your friendships within your family. You know, I saw a book some time ago of don't sweat the small stuff. And that's really the truth. There's, there's a lot of things that I'm not saying they're not important, but by proportion, they're small stuff. They don't matter that much. I'm not saying they don't matter, but they don't, they don't deserve the critique that, it, that they're getting. We're, we're looking at it through the wrong lens. And I just want to say, you know, the Bible talks about this. It says that you need to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Now, that's good advice because a lot of times something will happen. We'll get our feelings hurt. Like I said, somebody get a parking place. Somebody will say something that they should not have said. You know they should not have said it. But for whatever reason they, they did, you have a choice what you're going to do with it. You can overreact and make something that's very small, very big. I mean, listen to me. I have seen people come to divorce courts over the s silliest, little, tiny things. And, and adults, grown adults, fighting and arguing over things that really, if they had time to look at it later, they would realize that's just kind of silly. It is, it's just kind of silly. 
And I want to just encourage you that when something goes wrong, certainly be quick to hear, be slow to speak. In other words, hold your tongue, don't say anything. You know, there's sometimes we say things and it just inflames the situation. I think that's one of the worst things about Facebook. As wonderful as Facebook is, and I use it every day, I try to go and encourage somebody and help them and uh, try to teach them, try to teach them to fly, help them bring to new levels of their life. Yet it breaks my heart when I see people who I'm thinking they're smarter than this will go on Facebook and make statements about their friends or how they were mistreated or how I didn't appreciate that and I'm not putting up with this and don't anybody do, you know, what a, and, and so they, they really don't understand what that means to be slow to speak. That means, that means when things happen to you, don't just have that knee jerk reaction where you just say something. I'm just going to tell you, it makes you look much smaller than you are. It makes you look much worse. Now I say worse. That's maybe that's not a good word. It makes you look immature. It makes you look spiritually immature when you have quick responses. When things go wrong in your life, don't overreact. Don't, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. I'm, I'm just telling you right now, most of the things you can fix if you don't make it so big that it can't be fixed. You know, like I said, when you make a mountain out of a molehill, it's a lot easier to move a molehill than it is to move a mountain. It takes a lot more effort, a lot more work. But the fact is, we make those things from molehills to mountains by exaggerating the importance, by fighting over things that are silly. I was, I was, I was talking to someone the other day about what I was watching uh, someone do on Facebook or on whatever medium that they were using. And I thought, you know what, you would expect that from somebody from middle school. You would expect that from someone who was a child, someone who didn't really have any, any sense of uh, boundaries. But you really get disappointed when you see adults do that. And I just want to say, you need to be, you need to be quick to hear. Hear what's going on, but be slow to speak and be slow to wrath. You feel like you want to get even? Why don't you set that on the shelf for a couple of days? Why don't you spend some time before you say anything, before you do anything, just put it on the shelf for a couple of days. You'll find out that, that a lot of things that you thought was huge is really very small. It's very small and very, you know, and, and I would love that if it was the proper size. And, and of course, the, the interesting thing, those of you that maybe came in late, you need to go back and see the beginning of this thing because the way I put the camera on it, the way I put the lens on it, I made it look big. But then when you saw it in proportion to everything else, it was very small. That's how your problems are. That's how your disagreements are. That's how the things that divide you, that's how they are. They're very small. They are. And, and, and they will ruin your life if you allow them. So I just want to say that, that it's very important that you not overreact when things go wrong. Don't make something bigger than it is. Don't, don't, uh, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. I'm going back through and making all of the analogies, you know, don't do that because what, what it all becomes is a distraction. I think that's really probably the best, the best analogy for it. It becomes a distraction to you. When you get tied up in squabbles and arguments and disagreements, you, it's like you stop in that place and time. You stop in your progress. You stop with your business. You stop with everything that you're doing and you have to focus on that. Arguments and disagreements and things that were very small that got very big, they're stealing your, the, the one thing that you can never, ever, ever get back and that is your time.
It's so important that you that you back off. So those of you that maybe are going through something, maybe you're mad at someone, maybe someone hurt your feelings, <laughs> maybe somebody cut you off or got your parking spot, <laughs> maybe somebody unfriended you. I mean, I thought, I thought, dear Lord, so they unfriended me. I, I had someone unfriend me before, and I thought, what is the deal with that? I mean, seriously. I am like the nicest guy I know. Why would anybody unfriend me? <laughs> but you know what? That's not a big deal. Could have been an accident. Truly could have been. You know, but that's the question is, the fact are we, are we willing to leave things the size they really are? Or are we going to try to make a mountain out of a molehill and make something bigger than what it really is? Why don't you make... Why don't you make the decision right now? Maybe you're having a problem in your family. Why don't you apologize? You know what? That's that's such a that's such an easy thing to do. If 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 someone's been hurt, whether you meant it or whether you didn't mean it, and you could stand on the on the on the chair of defense and say, I didn't mean it, and you can't well, let that go. Let that go. Let me just tell you something. That person your friend is more important than your right to prove you're right. <laughs> that, that person that you love, that person that has stood by you, they're more important than your right. Why? Well, by rights, you know, who cares? Who cares? Why don't you let it go? Today, maybe you need to make a couple of phone calls. Just call them and say, you know what? I've made something much bigger than it is. I'm sorry. I should not have done that. Now, it may be their fault, but you know what the Bible says? The Bible says if your brother's offended at you, you go to him. Now, that doesn't seem fair, does it? <laughs> it really doesn't. Wait a minute. He's the one that's done wrong. Why don't he come to me? But that's what the Bible says. The Bible says if your brother's offended at you, you go to him and be reconciled to him. And I think that's a very important lesson for you. And it's, it's very important that you not let things get blown out of proportion. And you do that, first of all, by going with a heart of humility, with, a, with an attitude that is apologetic, with an attitude of, of, of being humble, and submit yourself to one another. That's something the Bible talks about submitting yourself to one another you know what again I have a right to my opinion but my friend is more important to me than my rights it's the truth more important than how I look is is that relationship you know that's and and that's when you can really tell what's on the inside of you so that being said, I want you to set your heart right now to analyze what's in your life. Maybe something has gotten bigger than it was supposed to. Maybe something has been exaggerated. Let it go. Why don't you this time, right now, make the decision to reconcile. Call on the phone, send a text, send an email, go visit. Take your hat in your hand and submit yourself. And I promise God, the Bible says this. It says, yielding pacifies great offense. <laughs> it's the truth. Somebody can be very, very offended, but it says yielding pacifies great offense. Why don't you do that? I, just, I don't know. I just feel a, I just feel a sense of of pulling at me at this point uh, I just feel I just feel like I'm, I'm maybe belaboring this thing but I feel unctioned in my spirit I feel very unctioned in my heart that what God's got for you is is too important to get stalled up over a disagreement or getting your feelings hurt you got your feelings hurt well you know, I could say something like, put your big boy pants on and get back up and, and face life, but 
fact is, is if you've got, if you've been wounded, if you've been hurt, the Lord is our comforter and the Lord will heal that wound in your heart. But the thing that's pleasing to the Lord is our unity, our walking in fellowship with one another. I think that's what the Lord would want from you. So would you do that right now? Again, you know, back to the beginning, I think you need to go back and see it. I wanted to see, I wasn't sure how many of you would actually t take the bait, but when, when, when you have this thing by itself, it's huge. But when you get it in proportion to everything around it, you see how small it is. That's how your problems are. That's how your problems are. They're small. And you are a problem solver. I don't care what it is, you can fix it. Come on, let's get to work. Let's go find somebody we can love. Let's find somebody we can reconcile with. And let's make this thing happen for them as well as for us. All right? I've enjoyed being with you. I, I, I hope the thought... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just a thought, but I hope the thought meant something. I, I hope it does. And uh, let me know if, if, if it did. If, if this type of thing uh, interests you at all, please uh, leave a comment, push like. And those of you on, on uh, YouTube, please uh, uh, push subscribe. I would certainly appreciate that. But I love you. And uh, I, I want to say again, how valuable your friendship is to me. Thank you. Um, the older I get, the more important that I see that the most important thing in life is not things at all, it's people. And my relationship with you is very important and I thank you for that, okay? I love you guys and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. And I want you to have an awesome, awesome, awesome evening. All right, God bless you, bye-bye.